Hey everybody, today we're doing an oil catch can on the Miata, as well as adapting hose barbs to AN fittings. On the way, we're gonna figure out why do you even want to use AN fittings, and do you even need a catch can on a Miata? So let's, uh, let's go tear it apart and learn along the way. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the rubber hose that's on the vacuum side of the PCV system. Uh, this is the part of the system where uh, the manifold is gonna be pulling a vacuum, uh, which will be pulling all that gunk and stuff out of the crankcase back into the manifold so it can get brought into the combustion process again and you know hopefully burned up. But the reason it might be, it's like a catch can on these cars is to help take some of that gunk and put it into the catch can and not back into the engine. Uh, Miata's the port injection, so it's, it's less needed. But as we go turbo, or if you have a direct injection car, catch cans can really be beneficial for just like long-term engine uh, uh, you know, longevity. So uh, pretty simple, hose comes off. We need to remove this bar, which will, will be fun and probably super on there as it's old. Oh, here it comes. So that's your PCV valve. You can probably hear it too. That's a little ball valve in here that allows the vacuum to open and close um, this whole system. We'll put that back in the valve cover here. Make sure that grommet stays in place. There we go. And now we have that separated. We've got these really cool adapters that allow us to attach them to a, uh, you know, to a uh, barbed fitting, and then we'll run AN fittings. Uh, let's go figure out why you might want AN fittings and, and how they work. All right, so why would you even want AN fittings? You know, what's the point of AN fittings and what do they even stand for? Uh, well, back in like World War II, uh, there was a desire for really durable, easy to use fittings that didn't leak. I could handle really any kind of, any kind of liquid. Um, and that's where the Army Navy, Army Navy standard kind of came into play. Um, they often look like these or like these. You've probably seen them on like race cars. Uh, they're really awesome because they just can carry really any kind of liquid. Uh, they're easy to reuse, unlike old rubber hoses, which kind of age and you can't get them off the barbed fittings that they're attached to. And the way they work is that they're a, uh, they are a, uh, a pressure safe fitting that uh, seals based on the angle and pressure uh, applied. So there's a little bit of a flare on the end of here. It's, I think it's like 37 degrees or something. And as these fittings attach, the angle of the fittings create the seal. So there's no need for an O-ring or thread sealant like you might find on an MPT fitting. They seal just based on the angle uh, and the pressure applied on that fitting. Now there's two kinds of popular hoses you'll see. There's like a stainless steel braided hose uh, and there's this kind of like nylon braided hose. Um, and then there's sort of like a, a CPE sort of regular most liquid hose and a PTFE hose, which is typically used for fuel applications as it has a, a, uh, an extra a lining in the fuel hose that prevents like fuel vapors from smelling up your garage or wherever it might be. Uh, it's a little bit better for, for fuel usage. And the fittings for those on the ends uh, are different than the fittings on like this kind of hose, uh, which look kind of like this. This little barb will go into the uh, hose around the outer sheathing and then it will be sealed with this end on the other side of the hose, creating a full seal, which I just dropped. But you'll see it on the hose and we'll see how that actually comes together here in a sec. All right, but first, before we begin, uh, let's go get the AN adapters put on the hose barbs and talk about what that process is gonna look like. The only kind of unique thing to these adapters is that they want a little bit of gasket maker or kind of uh, silicone adhesive on the hose barbs just to help with its sealing. Uh, but then once they're installed, it'll uh, work just like any other kind of AN fitting. Uh, so let's go take a look at uh, how that's gonna work. All right, so these are our two PCV uh, hose barbs that we're working with. This is obviously the one from the crankcase and the one in the intake manifold. And this is our special adapter. It's got an O-ring in there designed for the diameter of these hose barbs. This will fit around. This will come in on top and they'll cinch each other together around those barbs, very similar to how you would install 
the hose ends on uh, like stainless steel AN hose, for example. But something unique that we need to do for these is use some kind of gasket maker or silicone adhesive just a little bit on the hose barbs to help with it um, sealing and to help uh, with the installation. I already checked the fittings on these. They seem pretty smooth. So we're just gonna do just a little bit of this. And I got a little bit of a glove to help after I try and break this adhesive in. We'll install that and then I'll show you what that looks like once they're on. It's all done. All right, so here are the fitting adapters. Uh, there's a little bit of movement uh, on them. Uh, some of that gasket maker we applied will help, uh, but that's okay, right? They're gonna lock on that barb and they're nice and solid. Um, and now we've got A and fittings uh, attached to our originally hose barbed system. I think what we'll be able to do is fit a 90 on here and then a regular hose coming off of here. These are very close to hitting, but there's a little bit of play in the grommet and PCV valve, which I think should give us the outcome we need once we run the hose off here and the 90 off here and do our, our oil catch can. With that said, let's go talk about if you even need an oil catch can and what they do uh, for Miatas. Real question is, what even is an oil catch can? And do you want one or need one in your NA Miata or NB Miata? Uh, the whole purpose of an oil catch can is to catch oil. Uh, why would there be oil and why are you catching it? The PCV system uh, of the engine uh, tries to pull out uh, crankcase vapors, which is just a little gunk and stuff that's a byproduct of the combustion cycle. And it normally puts that back into the intake manifold where it can ideally be burned again as part of the combustion process, but you're still putting gunk and uh, you know minor uh, uh, debris in back into the engine. So a catch can's job is to catch those and just send the pre uh, the filtered uh, oil vapors back into the combustion uh, process. So it still sends those, but it tries to catch some of the bigger debris uh, that might have otherwise gone into your engine. But they can be kind of controversial, or at least, very least, they can be uh, brought up in internet forums a lot uh, under, do I need this? And truthfully, on naturally aspirated port injection cars, no, you don't need them, but they do bring some minor benefits. Uh, port injection means the fuel is sprayed on top of the valves, which cleans them, uh, and that's sort of the main benefit you get from a catch can. Uh, if you were to install it on a direct injection car where that fuel is not cleaning your valves. And so that gunk that the catch can either is or isn't catching if you don't install one would be going onto your valves and eventually would require valve cleaning. Uh, OEMs don't usually install these because it's extra maintenance. There are some things to be aware of in the winter when stuff freezes. Uh, and it's just one more maintenance item that OEMs don't typically want to include in the process. But on direct injection, especially uh, forced injection cars like turbos, you definitely, definitely need these. For us on this project, we're gonna be installing one in preparation for a turbo where it will have more value. But for now, minor benefits. The way they work is there's an inlet where the PCV from the crankcase will go. And there's an outlet, which will take us back into that intake manifold again, where all those now filtered vapors can be brought back into the cycle. Let's go install it. We're almost done with this. Just some hoses to route, one mount to install, and we'll be good to go. All right, so let's take our catch can, figure out where it's gonna go in the car. I've already kind of thought about this a little bit, and because of this base that I've got in here, there's no ABS. Uh, otherwise, this would be kind of a prime area that the ABS would be in. So I'm thinking of mounting it right about here. We wanna make sure that that dipstick uh, doesn't hit the Hood, I think will be good. This will mount here, and then our hoses have a good run from here out to a 90 into here, lower 90 into this one, which will have a 90 coming off of it, which should give the hoses uh, smooth curves. You don't want any bends, any sharp bends uh, in your lines. Uh, so we we'll wanna keep that in mind as we're trying to route these together. Um, cool, probably gonna time-lapse this, we'll install this, mount it in there, start locking up our, our lines, and then we'll come back to you and we'll show you how to make some A in uh, hoses.
All right, catcher can's installed. Last thing we gotta do is get our hoses set up. We've got the adapters we need, the, the angle adapters we need, just hoses. Um, there's several ways of doing these hoses. I'm gonna show you the way that I do them. We're gonna take our hose in. This is what's gonna go onto the hose. Then this barb will follow into this connector, pulling these together. But we need to make sure, uh, and by pulling it together, it means it will pull this barb uh, through, which will then create the actual connection in the hose itself. To do that, we're gonna, we're gonna put this in the vise. Uh, you really want to get yourself a set of these like AN uh, uh, little jaws. They are really, really helpful. And we're going to cinch that down a good amount. They're aluminum, so they don't want mar uh, the connectors. Same way like the aluminum AN wrenches are also uh, good to not mar your connectors. Then we're going to take our hose, which we already cut, and we're going to work on getting this in here. And this is honestly the hardest part, I think. You want to go until it bottoms out in the connector. Let's see, we're not quite there yet. I can find that twisting them in can help. Almost there. Some assembly lube or like WD-40 can help. Did not put any in this one, but I will on the next one. I'll tell you that, that's for sure. All right, I had a little bit of it come off, so I'm gonna do something you're not really supposed to do and just Do what I say, not what I do. All right, and that is pretty dang close. So now we're going to take these very precariously placed jaws, put them in this view. And now we take that barbed fitting, and this is when it all comes together. Because this hose has been pulled far enough into that uh, flared section, when the threads engage, that barb will get pressed into the hose and it'll create a really tight fit that will not leak on you and is, of course, reusable. So I can already feel that that's doing good. We're going to take our, our wrenches here. And again, you'll want to use some of these aluminum wrenches so you don't mar your fittings up. And you should be able to feel some of the resistance happening. In fact, we can probably rotate this vise. You'll start hearing it kind of spread the hose a little bit. These are adjustable, so they are sort of marring it a little bit. Uh, if you cared, you might get ones that were a little bit different in size. But we're about to wrap this one up. You wanna make sure you get it all the way in. You'll fill it bottom out. 
Just a little bit of a snug after that, and that's not going anywhere. And then always do a pull test. You should be able to put your whole mite into that, and it won't be going anywhere. Uh, and that's your hose end. It's not the most beautiful hose in the world, but uh, for what we're doing with just some uh, oil vapor, it's going to be fine. Uh, fuel line, I'd probably clean up a little bit more, but we'll do better on the next one. Uh, but let's go see if it fits the car. I'm gonna go ahead and install this one on the manifold side, which is going to be the out port from the oil filter. Um, this is where we're gonna send all of that filtered vapor back into the engine. So we'll run that there. And then I think we'll go over this throttle cable Attach that there and we'll tighten it down whenever we're done. But I think that's a good, good run. Then we'll do the next uh, line, which will come from the current case into the inlet. And we'll need to make that line and then we'll, we'll be all done. All right, everybody. One more thing I want to give a little quick pro tip on before we wrap up the rest of this project. When you're cutting your stainless steel or nylon braided hoses, you want to apply some tape, ideally just like some painter's tape, not thick stuff like electrical tape or this canvas electrical tape. Apply some painter's tape around where you wanna cut the hose. That way when you either use an angle grinder or some of these like braided hose cutters, you can try and reduce any of the fraying that occurs. This is nylon braided, which is probably gonna fray sort of regardless. An angle grinder is your best bet. Definitely wear like a face mask because it gets all sorts of nasty stuff in the air. Um, you can use the, uh, the, you know, the pliers though, the cutters, uh, but you may have a little bit of fraying left over that you might need to clean up. Regular stainless line, usually a little bit easier to cut um, but depending on you know what you're going for you may be stuck with this this nylon style hose so we'll get things started and wrapped up catch can installed. We converted our hose barbs over to AN fittings. That way we can reuse them. They're stronger and easier to work with. Now we just drive the car, see how much oil we collect. I'll report back on how that goes. But this has set us up great for when we eventually go turbo. We already have this system taken care of. Stay tuned for next time as we keep working on the Miata and maybe even some other future projects. Stay tuned. See you next time.